Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I wanted to do a video about the Raspberry Pi model railroad camera car that I've been working on over the past year or so. So the first design I posted about sometime last year, looks like in May. And this was something that I threw together, that my dad and I actually threw together um, for our model railroad layout. And I had wanted to do this for a while, but the first step, the first attempt, I just taped the camera to the side of the car. But then we actually made this little car, and it's basically just a piece of scrap plastic with some weights taped to it and two model railroad trucks that are able to follow the rails and then we attached the camera to the front truck so that as the truck rotated the camera would stay kind of looking straight down the rails and this worked fairly well but overall the construction was just hacked together so the Pi and the power supply which was just a USB power bank rode along in a separate car and it worked but it wasn't pretty and being powered by a battery meant that as you were using this, if you're using for an extended amount of time or you didn't charge the battery, then the battery would just die randomly. So it wasn't the best solution, but it worked. So I did want to go ahead and improve this and make a design where it would pick up power from the rails rather than just uh, have a battery. And I also would like to kind of condense everything down into one car that you could just put on the tracks and go rather than having to connect this cable and set everything up. And it was kind of annoying to move it around and take it off the track because it was in multiple pieces. So what I had come up with was... This car here, let's bring that into view. So I had made this car and originally the Pi sat on these standoffs and was powered by this circuitry here. And then I had the camera just glued to the front like this on, it's actually a truck model that didn't print very well. This is all 3D printed. I just glued it to the front for testing. And that worked okay. And this system actually works pretty well. So I have two power pickup trucks. These are off the shelf from Athern. And each one picks up power from both rails and outputs it over two wires. So I tie the two sets of wires together so that you have rail A and rail B, and then they go into a bridge rectifier. And that converts the AC, which is actually just 12 volts switched polarity, into 12 volts DC, which then goes into the switching regulator. And I've adjusted it to five volt output. And then originally I just connected the output of that straight to the Raspberry Pi. And it did power up and I was able to get the video stream running off the Pi. But the problem is model railroad wheels and power pickups aren't perfect, especially as your track gets dirty. So this track is fairly clean and we can move it back and forth. And this LED represents the power coming off of the rails. So we'll just ignore these LEDs for now. But you notice if I even rock the car a little bit so that the wheels jump off the track, that light flickers. And this happens going around curves or over dirty track or over various things like turnouts where you might not have power continuously on the rails all the way. Having two power pickup trucks does help because you have two chances to pick up power actually four because each truck has two wheels but it's still not ideal and what I was seeing was even running around this little test track because um, the layout is actually at my parents house and so I've just set up this little test track here 
uh, using an Arduino with DCC++ as the command station. Uh, even running around this test track, I've this is pretty much brand new track. It's clean, but I was still having every once in a while it would shake or jump. And even this little amount of interruption in the power was enough to reset the Pi and have it reboot, which would kill off your video feed. And that's no fun. So I definitely, so I decided I definitely need a battery but I need a battery that can charge and run at the same time with no power interruptions. So I tried the little power bank that I already had, but it would only either charge or run. It wouldn't do both at the same time. Uh, so then I looked into battery charger modules online and I found these, which are, I forget exactly which uh, chip they use, but they're supposed to be charge and run modules with a 5 volt output and a USB-C input and overall they worked pretty well but whenever you disconnect the input the output dips very briefly and so what would happen was whenever it switched from the external power to the battery power the Pi would reset anyways and I tried adding some capacitors to kind of just ride the Pi through that disconnect but it wasn't enough. And so I started looking into alternative battery modules and I found some other ones, but I didn't like them as much. And one thing I was doing, I was reading reviews of this module to see if there were any uh, people talking about this issue. And I saw one review on Amazon where he mentioned that this module uh, did that power dip out, but he mentioned a solution was that since these things come in like packs of five or ten, if you had two of them, you just connect them together. So they're both connected to the battery. So I have them stacked one on top of, it, of the other. The one on the bottom is plugged into the USB 5 volts, and the one on top is outputting to the Pi. Both of them are connected to the battery, which is just an old phone battery. And this system actually works pretty well because... The one on top never knows what the power source is. It's always running off the po the battery. And then the bottom one is just charging it when it has power. And it seems to work pretty well. So that means that when I take this off the rails, the Pi is still powered. And then when I put it back on the rails, the battery is still charging. So that was step number one complete. Power is... Um, fulfilled. I had a working power system that was pretty robust and reliable. But then the difference between the original design and this one was that now the camera is fixed on the front of the car. It's just glued in like that. And unfortunately having the car extended or the camera extended out past the edge of the truck as the car goes around curves this edge swings out over the track and so the camera is now looking off to the side away from the curve and because these Pi cameras have kind of a narrow field of view it basically looks like you're looking off into the distance at nothing and the track actually kind of goes off the screen as long like if you were coming around the track would just go off the screen and then it would kind of come back into view after you've rounded the curve, which I didn't really like that behavior. So this was the next problem to solve. And to solve that, I wanted to make the camera swivel just like it did on the original design. And I thought about just cutting a hole in the flatbed and bringing like a pillar up to mount the camera on the truck itself so that it would just act like it did before. But then I thought, you know, if we use some kind of mechanical system, you could actually have the camera rotate a little bit more than the truck, whether you use gears or pulleys or something or levers. And that way, the effect would be even better because then the camera would sort of look into the curve, which is more natural feeling. Like if I was riding on a train, I would probably look into the curve rather than just looking straight ahead. Um... So 
that was the next thing, and that's what I designed yesterday, and that's what I had just now posted on Twitter yesterday, and again, Raspberry Pi picked it up and retweeted it, so that's this. I posted about, and I posted this picture showing off my design, and I didn't post very much. I just posted these two pictures and I tagged Raspberry Pi and then they retweeted it today. So this design is something that I came up with because I thought about gears and I thought about levers and I decided a rubber band pulley system would actually be pretty easy to do. So I just made two wheels. The front one is uh, three centimeters across in diameter and the back one with the camera is only two. So there is an advantage to distance, like to angle, for the camera. The camera is going to rotate a larger angle than the truck just because that wheel is smaller and the other wheel is bigger. And then to link the front wheel to the truck itself, I put two nails, one on each side, and then that goes down into the truck through the flatbed, through little slots I cut. And then these little slots in the truck attach to the nails. And so the truck can still rotate freely a little bit, but it does move that wheel, which then moves the camera. And so this system actually works pretty well. So I wanted to give you a demonstration of that now. Um, so here's the camera and it's pointed forwards. If we look straight down, we can see that the camera is pointed pretty much straight ahead. So let's go ahead and look at the camera's viewpoint and we can see that the tracks kind of line up with the middle of the screen. So this is the midpoint of the screen according to OBS. And we can see that the camera is lined up with it. So as the camera moves forward, it should rotate once the wheels get to the curved section of track. And now you can see if I try and line the camera up looking down, you can see that the camera is actually curved, is kind of angled into the curve just, just briefly, just barely. And then if we go back to the camera view, we can see um, that is the midpoint of the frame. And the track is kind of curved off to the left because the camera is looking into the curve. So now I'm going to just bring the train in and go for a ride around the loop. So let's go ahead and turn on the train. Come on. So now watch as we go around the curve. You can see that now we're in the curve. The camera is just briefly, barely look to the left. And then now when we get to the straightaway, it's going to kind of level back out. And if the train goes too slow, it seems like it doesn't level all the way out. So let's speed up the train. Now they, we're going around the curve again. Now we're leveling back out and we're centered, going around the curve. We're centered.
Let's go for another lap. So the next thing I want to show you is I want to just demonstrate what it looks like without the rubber band so you can see the difference and compare between with and without because I think it doesn't you don't necessarily notice it if you're just looking at it because it kind of just seems natural that it looks into the turn and it's not looking in a huge amount but when you remove the rubber band so that the camera doesn't turn it's quite a drastic difference. So once it comes back over here, I'm going to park the train and we'll remove the rubber band. Stop. The web interface for JMRI isn't the best. So now we're just going to let's push this back so that it's on straight track. And then I pushed it off the track a little bit. So make sure it's. Now we're just going to undo the rubber band and make sure that that's still on the track. That's still on the track. So now the camera will not turn. Now let's go back to the camera and then we'll start the train up again. I'm not sure why the camera module three does this in and out autofocus thing. The I just switched to a camera module three for this build and um, yeah, it's been doing this every once in a while. It's kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and start the train up again. So if you can see, the camera kind of just stares off the track out into the right of the track because it's not turning into the track. So I, the idea was I wanted the track to kind of stay sort of centered in the frame. And without the rotation, it just kind of looks away. And the camera module 3 actually improves this quite a bit. The effect is a lot worse on the camera module 1 because the field of view of the module 1 is sort of uh, lower. It's a narrower field of view. And so the track almost just disappears, especially when the camera is mounted at the end of the car rather than an inch or two in from the end of the car. So this 
rubber band trick actually seems to improve this performance of the camera quite a bit. So I'm pretty happy with it. So that's really all I had for you today. I just wanted to show off this camera car and the changes I've done to it. And obviously it's not done. I would like to consolidate all the electronics back onto the new car with the camera swivel mount, but I haven't done that yet. And then hopefully I'll finalize the design and post everything on Thingiverse so you can download them and build your own if you want. But that's all I have for now. I know people on Twitter today were asking to see a video from the car's perspective. So that's what I'm doing here and hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.